All right, good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Hey, this is the day that the Lord have made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning to you, and thank you so much for tuning in in the backyard, Pastor Perryman. Hey, today is a beautiful day. Today is an exciting day. Uh, today is a lovely day. Today is a Monday, and the sun is shining here. So good morning to every one of you, and thank you so much for tuning in in the backyard, Pastor Perryman. Do me a favor, share, like, tag, invite today. Start a watch party. Get other people to come on and be a part of In the Backyard with Pastor Perryman. Uh, today is going to be exceptional. It's going to be fantastic. It's going to be exciting. And it's going to be encouraging today. So, again, share, like, tag, invite. Start a watch party this morning. Get other people to come on and be a part of In the Backyard with Pastor Perryman. So, let me give some shout outs to those who are on Instagram today, those who are on Facebook Live today. Hey, shout out to Miss Diane King, who's on this morning. Shout out to Brother Salilo Jones, who's on this morning. Kaylin Kennebrew is rocking with us today. Good to see you. Thank you so much for being on. Frederick Milner is in the house. Good to see you, man. Miss Teresa Wells is with us today. Good to see you. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning. I appreciate you. Hey, my brother uh, Timothy Price is on today. Shout out to him. Hey, Bam is on this morning. My cousin Robert Perryman is in the house. My wife, Pastor Sophia, is in the house. Good to see you. Minister Kim Simmons is in the house. Good to see you. Hey, Miss Shirley Powell is in the house. Good to see you. Thank you so much for tuning in. So again, y'all share, like, tag, invite. Start a watch party today. Get other people to come on and be a part of In the Backyard with Pastor Perryman. So listen, let me get some of this amazing coffee that my wife made. Then we're going to have some, we're going to have a great time in the Lord today, all right? But again, need y'all to share, like, tag, invite. Need y'all to start a watch party today, all right? All right. Well, let's get to it today. Some years ago, man, it could have been maybe, I want to say probably... 11 years ago, something like that, we're living in Gardena, and I am sitting on couch, got this burgundy couch uh, in the living room. I'm sitting on the couch, and to be honest with you, I'm depressed. I'm frustrated. I'm just contemplating walking away from ministry. I'm contemplating giving up on the things of God. Those things are just not working for me. I got about $10 in my pocket, quarter of a tank of gas in the car. I got three day pay of quits, sticker, I mean, note on my door that if we don't get the rent, rent paid in three days, we could be put out. I got past due notices on the light bill and the gas bill, and I got nothing. I'm looking in the refrigerator, and I'm seeing that there's nothing really in the refrigerator. Looking in the cabinets, and we really don't have nothing in the cabinet but a couple of canned goods and some cups of noodles in there. And um, I'm just depressed. I'm feeling less than a man. I'm feeling like I'm not a good husband. And I'm feeling like a failure. I'm sitting on the couch. TV is on, but I'm not really paying attention to it. I'm really soaking in my issues. My daughter Treasure comes running out of the room, and she runs up to me. And she says, what's wrong, Poppy? And I just said, well, I'm having some challenges right now. And what she does is she looks me in the head, looks me in the eye, and she says to me, God can turn it around. Then she kissed me on the forehead, patted me on the forehead, and ran to the other room as if there was no problem. So I'm sitting there for about a good minute, and I'm saying to myself, <laughs> well, he going to have to be the one to turn this around. Because there ain't no way to ain't no other way. I can't make it work. It's gonna have to be him to turn it around. Within a week, everything was completely turned around. Rent was paid, light bill was paid, gas bill was paid, groceries was put in the house. I was able to take my wife <clears throat> out to eat. I was able to take her shopping. I was able to take the kids to go get something. God had turned it around. Several years later, I would say maybe four years later, we moved into this home and I'm sitting here and I'm frustrated again because I'm looking at all of these bills are coming to this house at one time. Light bills are expensive, gas bills are expensive, payment for the house is expensive, everything that went up and I'm sitting here looking at this situation like, man, what in the world am I gonna do? And I was reminded of something that my daughter said. Don't worry, Poppy. God can turn it around. And I had to tell myself, 
that God can still turn it around. There may be many of you who are watching me today and maybe you are with your back is against the wall and you just don't know what you're going to do, how you're going to come out of this, how's it going to work for me, where am I going to get this money from to do this, I'm in this pandemic, how am I going to be able to pay these bills, I don't have a job, well, how am I going to be able to come out of this? And I came to tell you this morning that God can still turn it around for you too. I know, I know it seems as if you got to have X amount of dollars by this time frame and it seems as if God hadn't shown up yet. But may I tell you today to don't count God out because he can still turn it around. I remember Bishop I.B. Hilliard, he was then Bishop I.B. Hilliard, tells the testimony how money coming into the ministry was not enough. And here he is, he's contemplating laying off his staff because He's not going to have enough money to meet payroll, so he's got to be able to tell his staff we're not going to be able to make, meet payroll this week. At least get the people prepared. He picks up the phone and calls his mentor, Dr. Fred Price, and Dr. Fred Price, he tells Dr. Price's situation that he's not going to be able to make payroll because the money didn't come in. He says to his surprise that Dr. Price didn't get on him, but Dr. Price gave him a different kind of wisdom. Usually, if I called him with stuff like that, he would jack me up. But he, do, he didn't do this this time. What he told me was, he says, Ira, sometimes we think we're in faith and we're not. Bishop Hayes says he's stunned because I'm teaching faith. This is how I live. He says, Ira, here it is on Tuesday. Payroll don't have to be in till Friday. You have already counted God out. In a sense, he's telling, he's telling Dr. Hilliard, God can still turn it around. That many of you today, you counted God out because you don't see how it's going to work. You don't see how he's going, he's, how, how the bills are going to get paid, how this is going to get paid. You don't see how your healing is going to come. You don't see any of that because you're looking at, a, at, a, at an expiration date that if I don't have it by this time, that, that, that things, I'm going to lose it all. And here it is on a Monday. You already counted God out. May I tell you today that God can still turn it around? He can still turn it around. He can still turn it around. The Bible tells us that God is the Lord of the harvest. He can still turn it around. Scripture tells us that, that not only can God turn it around, but God can turn it around in such dramatic fashion that it blows your mind and blows the mind of the people who started to count you out. He can still turn it around. You've been through hell and high water before. You've been through some tough times before. May not be as bad as this situation, but you've been through some stuff before. The Bible tells us like this, that time and chance happen to us all. That means everybody has been through something. Everybody has gone through something. Everybody has had doors closed on them. Everybody has had people back out on them. Everybody has had somebody who walked away from them. But may I tell you today that God is consistent. He's the one that said that he would never leave you, nor will he forsake you. The Bible says he's with you to even to the end of the world, so you can count on him. He can still turn it around. You got point of references in your life. Well, you can see in your own personal life that he worked it out. You can go back and look at the life of other people, and you can see that he worked it out. If he did it for them, he could do it again. The song said if he did it before, he could do it again. If he did it for somebody else, he could do it for you. If he made it happen for them, he could make it happen for you. If he turned it around for her, he could turn it around for you. If he turned it around for him, he can turn it around for you. I came to tell you today that God can still turn it around. He can still turn it around. Storms are raging, winds are blowing, the enemies are coming at your own hands. He's causing ruckus of chaos in your home. Children are acting a fool, don't have the level of respect for you that they should have. You and your husband not on the same page like you should be. All hell is breaking loose, and you're even wondering, can I even have any joy? Can I even have any happiness? I came to tell you today that he can still turn it around. He can still turn it around. He can still turn it around. You ought to be putting that on your screen. You ought to be putting that on your screen saver. You ought to be putting that in a text message to somebody today that God can still turn it around. You ought to post that. You ought to tweet that. You ought to put that on the screen right now that God can still Turn it around. I don't care what you're facing today. He can still turn it around. I don't care how many notices you got. He can still turn it around. I don't care what the doctor's report has said. He can still turn it around. We serve a God who has never, ever lost a case. He can still turn it around. He can still turn it around. I know, I know, but pastor, you don't know what's blocking me. 
My credit score is blocking me. He can still turn it around. But pastor, I don't have the education that like other people. He can still turn it around. Pastor, I'm not eloquent like other people. I can't speak like other people. He can still turn it around. But pastor, you know, I, I lost my job. He can still turn it around. But pastor, you know, you know, everybody else, they got the upper hand. You know, I'm black. And you know, and I, we got to take two steps forward just to be able to get to the starting line. He can still turn it around for you. He can still turn it around. He can still turn it around. He can still turn it around. You have to have this mentality that God can turn it around. I know, I know there are people who are watching me today and you're saying, but, but Pastor, I, I, I tried it and it didn't work. L let me tell you what the prophet said to his PA, to his armor barrel. He said, go look again. In a sense, go try it again. He can turn it around. It, it's, it's so important for us to understand that God can still turn it around. He can still turn it around. It does not matter what is taking place in life. He can still turn it around. There's some things that you have done wrong in your life, and God can still turn it around. You know, you know, when you're in the church world, church people are so religious. Sometimes I like to call them the ridiculous religious. And, and they, they're so ridiculous to the point that they're pointing fingers at everybody else, pointing out everybody's flaws, forgetting that they got some. The truth of the matter is you did have a child out of wedlock. But God still can turn the situation around. Point of the matter is you did sleep with her when you should not have slept with her. You was married and she was married and y'all was creeping and doing your thing, but he can still turn that around. The, real, the reality is that there's some things that you did that you should not have done, some mistakes that you made that you should not have made, some places that you were that you should not have been, and, and bad came out of it. But God can still take your bad and turn it around. He can take your mess and make a message out of it. He can take your mishaps and he can do something mysterious with it. I'm talking to somebody today. He can still turn it around. He can still turn it around. You may have been sleeping with a married man and knew he was a married man. And out of that came a child, came a love child or whatever you want to call it. But, but God can still turn it around. He can still turn it around. He can take what the devil meant for evil. And make it out to be good. He, he can still turn it around. He can still turn it around. You may have lost this relationship. And you may have been the reason that your relationship fell apart. But God can still turn your relationship around. He can still turn it around. He can still turn it around. He can still turn it around. I'm talking to somebody. I need this to resonate in your spirit. That God can still turn it around. He can still turn it around. He can take your, your life. Excuse me. He can take your life. And he can turn it around. He can take your life and he can turn it around. You may have been to prison. He can take your life and he can turn it around. You may have killed somebody. He can take your life and he can turn it around. You may have been the person who's been ostracized and criticized and belittled and battering and bruising people. But he can still turn your life around. He can take your life. Turn it around. He can take the broken pieces of your life and he can take it and put it on the potter's wheel and he can shape you and make you and mold you all over again. He can turn your life around. How, how do you know this, Pastor? Is there any references that he can turn your life around? There is a reference the Bible talks about. The Bible said many are the afflictions of the, of the righteous, but the Lord is the one who delivered them out of all. In other words, God said, I can turn it around. You take the opportunity, you look at Moses. Here Moses is a kid who, who's really an orphan at this moment, who's really been sold, put in a basket and let blown down the river. He's raised in the Egyptian home. He's a Hebrew man. He's not accepted by the Hebrews and not accepted by the Egyptians. So he's in an in-betwixt and between place. And now all of a sudden he's killed the man and he's on the run and here's what God does takes him and he turns it around, turns his life around. If you look at Moses, Moses is a man, I mean, we, 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 Moses was a man that God took his life and turned it around. If you take Paul and look at Paul's life, here's what God did. God took his life and he turned his life around. This man had letters to go somewhere to kill Christians, to put them in jail because they were not living according to the way that he wanted them to live or the way he thought that, the, that, that, that they should have lived. And here's what he did. God took his life and he turned his life around. A Damascus Road experience cause his life to turn around. Is there any other references, Pastor, that, that, that says that he can turn your life around? Yeah, yeah, you can look at my life. Man. You can see that I was a man drinking a case of beer every day, three bottles of champagne, a pint of whiskey. I'm a man that is married before Pastor Sophia, got 10 girlfriends on the side. 
got kids over here, kids over there, dropping them like it's hot over here, dropping them over there, dropping them over here, not doing what I'm supposed to do as a father, not taking care of any of them, not saying that I love you, not there for them at the most important points of their life. But guess what God did? He took my life and he turned it around. Can God do it for you? You better believe that he can do it for you. I'm talking to somebody today because maybe your back is against the wall. Maybe you don't know how you're going to pay your bills. Maybe you don't know how you're going to overcome these health challenges. But I came to tell you this morning that God can turn it around for you. He can turn it around for you. He can turn your situation around. He can turn it around. A ask the woman, ask the widow woman who's there with her son and she's about ready to bake this little cake and eat it. For her and her son are going to eat it and die. But all of a sudden, a word from the Lord shows up in the form of a prophet and the prophet tells her, give this cake to me and if you give it to me, you're going to be sustained throughout the time. And the Bible says, here's what he did, turned her life around. I I'm talking to somebody this morning. He, he can turn your life around. Storms are raging. Winds are blowing. He can still turn your life around. The psalmist said, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. He, he can turn your life around. Look at the woman who was at the well, been married five times, and the man that she is with is not her husband. That doesn't mean that those are all the men that she's had. But the Bible only gives you the five men that she was married to. And the one that she's with was not her own. Guess what he did? He turned her life around. If he did it for her, he could do it for you. Look at the man who's in the tombs. And this man is in the tombs cutting himself. He's got a legion of demons on the inside of him. And the only one that can help him is Jesus. The Bible said he turned his life around. I'm talking to somebody today. He can turn it around for you. He can still Turn your life around. He can still turn it around. I know you're grieving and stuff because of the loss of a loved one. And he's the only one that can take your hurt and your pain away. Huh? He be the only one that can do it. <laughs> Bible tells us that he dwells with those who be of a broken and a contrite spirit. He, he can turn it around. <laughs> I'm at a place in my life where I don't have time to look down my nose at people. The woman who's, 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 who's dancing on the pole. The man who's in my homosexual lifestyle. I don't have time to look down on them. And the reason that I don't have time to look down on them is because I know the same God who helped me. The same God who shifted me. The same God who turned my life around is the same one who can turn their life around. The person that you're talking about today will be sometimes maybe the one who has to come and help you later on in life. Be careful who you talk about. Be careful who you put down because the very person that you're putting down is the one who God will elevate. He can turn their life around and he can turn your life around too. I'm talking to somebody this morning. He can turn your life around. He can turn your life around. Sometimes people say they thank God that he's the God of the second chance. I like to say that I thank God that he's a God of another chance. That he done given me more than two chances. He done given me more chances than what I can even count. I thank God for him turning my life around. When I look at myself in the mirror every day, I give God praise for the gray hairs that I got. Why, why you say that, Pastor? You give God praise for the gray hairs that you got? Because somebody didn't live long enough to get some gray hairs. I look at myself in the mirror every day and thank God for the man that I've become. <clears throat> because everybody didn't live to get this age. I look at myself and I say, bro, you about to be 52 next year, I mean this year. And I thank God for that because somebody didn't make it to be 18 and God let me live this long. He can turn it around. I'm grateful today. I'm talking to somebody today. You've been ridiculing you and belittling you and putting you down for so long that you're not even grateful for what he's done for you. You're not even grateful for who he has made you to be. You're not even grateful for the person that you are today. You're not even grateful. Just be happy that you're alive. Any day above ground is a good day. May not have the best, may not have the best, may not live in the best neighborhood, drive the best car, may not live in the best house, may not have all the money in the world, may not have all the designer clothes or the luxury that you want, but you're alive and you breathe in the day. And that's enough to give him praise for God. I just thank you today. Then I'm alive. I thank you, Lord, for this gray hair. I thank you for this stretch mark, God. I thank you right now in Jesus' name that you let me get this far. You let me live this far. I know too many people who didn't make it, but you let me make it. Thank you, Lord, that you gave me a house to live in. Thank you, Lord, you gave me an apartment. May not be the best apartment, but thank God for a place to live. God, I just thank you today that you gave me food to eat. It may not be steak. It may not be filet mignon, but you gave me something. God, thank you for the car that you gave me today. It may not be the Rolls Royce. It may not be a Bentley. It may 
not be a, 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 a Maserati, but God, I thank you. It's not even a Mercedes, God, but I thank you for what you gave me. I got some transportation. I don't have to get on the bus anymore, God. I don't have to thumb a ride. I don't have to pick up the phone and call anybody. I thank you, Lord. May not have a full tank of gas in it, but God, I thank you right now for the quarter of a tank that you gave me, God. I thank you for I'm learning to appreciate God for everything because I know that if it had not been for him, I could not be where I am today. I would not be in this situation that I am today. I wouldn't be alive today had it not been for him. And I'm talking to somebody today. You just keep on living and watch God turn everything around for you. How, how do you know God is turning it around for me, Pastor? Because he woke you up this morning. He's turning it around for you. You may be on a job today and you're not happy on the job. But be grateful that you got a job. God can turn it around. You may be in a relationship today and you may not be all the way pleased with him or all the way pleased with her. And you, you, you look at that situation from a wrong perspective. What's that, Pastor? You're looking at the 20% that he doesn't give you. You're looking at the 20% that she doesn't give you. And you're losing your mind over the 20%. Are you thinking that the grass is greener on the other side? I came to tell you that the grass ain't greener on the other side. What you need to do is stick with where God has you at today. Where does he have me at today, God, Pastor? He has me in a place where somebody loves me, where somebody cares about you, where somebody blesses you, where somebody is there for you, where somebody can put up with your idiosyncrasies and still be there for you. He can still turn all of that situation around too. But Pastor, it's Valentine's time. And I have Valentine's Day coming up and I don't have no boo thing. He can still turn that around too. You got to give that over to God. He can still turn that around too. I'm, I'm talking to somebody today. Because you're looking at what you don't have. And you've forgotten who you do have. And who you have is a savior. Somebody who came and died on the cross for you and shed their blood on Calvary's cross for you. Just for you to have a relationship with God. Just for you to be brought back, brought back in the right standing with God. He's turning your life around every day. Every day he's turning it around. There's subtle movements that God is making about your life that you're not even aware of. There's some strategic movements that God is, is strategically doing in your life that you're not even aware of. You're not finished your course yet. You can't leave this earth. You ain't finished your assignment yet. God still got work to do in you and through you. And he still got work to do for you. He can still turn your situation around. Just give this one over to him. He got you. <laughs> Let me get out this thing today. I pray y'all are blessed this morning that you were encouraged today. And uh, I believe in God that some life-changing things are going to take place in your life. I really believe that. So listen, do me a favor. Get your seed in the ground today. Hey, don't let the devil tell you that you can't sow, you can't give. You can't bless. Listen, if this message has been a blessing to you, get your seed in the ground today. If I'm talking directly to you today, this is something I never do. But if I'm speaking directly to you today and it's about your situation, you should get a seed in the ground today for that. That, that just says that, hey, that I'm sealing what was said to me. Not only am I sealing what was said to me, but man, I'm about to open up the floodgates in my life because I need God to do it for me. <laughs> if that's you, get your seed in the ground today. Now, I appreciate y'all this morning. Uh, go to our website. Well, you can go to, you can do it through the Cash App. The Cash App is the dollar sign, Pastor C. Perryman. Get it in the ground, Pastor C. Perryman. Get it in the ground. Or if you want to sow to my wife today, you can do it through, through the Cash App for her. It's Pastor Sophia, the dollar sign, Pastor Sophia. Get your seed in the ground today. If you want to sow through our church website, you can do that. It's the uh, uh, yeah, church website. is kingdomlifefaithcenter.org. Click on the online giving button there and you can get your seed in the ground today. All right. Hey, thank y'all so much for giving me your listening ear today. I appreciate y'all. Hey, won't y'all do me a favor? Keep keep me and my family in prayer today. We're going to keep y'all in prayer today. Nothing spectacular or anything. Just, hey, keep us in your prayers today and we'll do the same for you. All right. So get your seed in the ground today. I got to give somebody their day. Don't go anywhere. Got to give somebody their day. Hey, big shout out to Minister Kim Simmons on the Grease Share group that she led this past uh uh, Saturday, uh, from my understanding, her grease share group was really good. So listen, y'all got to connect with, with her on her grease share group. Connect with her on the grease share group, all right? You reach out to Minister Kim. Listen, it doesn't matter if you lost a loved one or if you're just going through some emotional challenges or emotional trauma, you got to connect to grease share. Well, listen, our next group coming up is the women's group. 
So connect to the women's group. My wife has some amazing things set and ready to go for the women's group. So y'all got to connect. There are a lot of you who are connected to the women's group. Uh, I think some of you registered for the women's group, but then I think you think that it didn't go through, but it did go through. Uh, so what I need y'all to do is um, just go to the women's group. It's going to be this Wednesday. I think it's the 11th. So connect, 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 connect to the women's group. Sign up for it. It's going to be a blessing. You're going to get the uh, link. Hey, if you already got the church app, uh, then you already have access to uh, the upcoming women group. All you have to do is click on the church app. And then when you click on the app, you'll see where it says connect. You tap on the connect button. And then once you connect, uh, tap on the connect button, you'll see the, the link that says join the small groups. And right out of it, it'll say women's small group. If you click on the women's small group, uh, you can't do it today, but when you do it, when you do it then, it'll let you get in the, it'll let you be a part of the women's group, all right? Now, this is for women only, no men. This is for women only, all right? So you will be able to connect to the women's group just by the, just by touching a link or touching a, a picture on the thing, and you'll be right on the, right on the women's group at 6 p.m. I think it's this Wednesday, February the 11th. I could be off, um, but... The women's group is this week. So y'all connect to it. It's going to be fantastic. It's going to be amazing. So connect to it, all right? If you haven't signed up for the singles group, you got to sign up for the singles group. Singles group is going to be off the chain, too. So make sure you sign up for that. That's going to be amazing. If you haven't signed up for the Mature Saints group, sign up for it. It's going to be amazing. If you haven't signed up for the Better Me group or the, or the Youth and Young Adult check-in, if you haven't signed up for that, you got to sign up for it. It's going to be fantastic. It's going to be phenomenal. It's going to be amazing. Those are at 6 p.m., all right, all of those take place this month. So sign up, sign up, sign up, sign up, sign up. Again, for the women's group, all right, you go to our website, kingdomlifefaithcenter.org, and then you click on the link that says small groups. When you click on the small groups link, it's going to give you all of the information of every small group we have. Our goal is to touch as many lives as we can. We want to help as many people. This is evangelistic outreach. We're looking to help people. So y'all, y'all can give these links out to people about being on these groups. We only want the women on the women's group, and we only want men on the men's group. But all the rest of the groups, hey, you could be co-ed or whatever the case may be. Male and female can be on them. We just ask that for the women's group, that it just be women only. For the men's group, it's men only, all right? So listen, I've given you all those quick, quick announcements. So listen, let me give you uh, somebody there day to day. And um, then I'm going to pray for you, all right? Well, let me pray for you first, then I'm going to give somebody that day to day, all right? So let me pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray. For every person who's watching me today, I ask in Jesus' name, God, that you would bless them tremendously. Add to their lives. Take their lives to another level in you. And God, I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Now, Father, hmm, all right. Father, I lift up Miss Linda Brown before you this morning. I pray grace and mercy and peace over her life today. I pray open doors for her this morning. And not only that, God, but I pray right now a renewing of her spirit this morning. I pray in Jesus' name, O oh God, for your grace to flow in her life like never before. And I pray in Jesus' name, God, that you would open up the floodgates in her life today. And I thank you, Father, right now that even as I'm praying now, all the secret hurt is removed today. And you're replacing it with joy, God. And I thank you, Father, right now in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Lord, that there'll be no thoughts in her life again about whether she has failed in anything. But God, you've been there all the time. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Now, Father, I lift up the country of Belize. I pray for every Belizean citizen. And I pray for peace and prosperity to flow through their lives. I pray this morning for my town, Itabina, Mississippi, God. And I thank you for blessing my town. I thank you, Lord, for adding to my town. And Lord, and I thank you for increasing my town. Now, Father, we lift up the Delta, and I pray for the Delta now. I pray your blessings over the Delta in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, got to give somebody that day today. Uh, uh, today, 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 today. <laughs> today is Miss Diane King's day. Whatever Miss Diane wants, she gets. Whatever Miss Diane needs, gets supplied. It's her day today. Uh, today is Miss Linda Brown's day. Whatever she wants, she gets. Whatever she needs, gets supplied. Today is her day today. Today is Miss Tisha Clark's day. Whatever day, whatever she wants, she gets. Whatever she needs, gets supplied. Today is her day today. So show them some love. Show them some appreciation. All right. And I thank y'all so very much 
uh, for being on, all right? But listen, don't forget, get your seat in the ground. Remember we said we don't believe in team, team I. We believe in team we. We are team, so for every soul we win, for every life we change, for every person who gets built up, you're going to get credit for it because you're a part of the team. So get your seed in the ground today and share this video. Make sure you let other people get blessed by it, all right? Thank y'all so much. And uh, for those of you who still want to get your Count Me In campaign um, videos in, please do that. Please do that. We've been making an appeal for them. Uh, but get your Count Me In campaign videos in. We greatly appreciate y'all for doing it. All you have to do, let's just say Miss Abigail Yates is, is one of the ones who want to get her Count Me In campaign video in. All you have to do is say, hey, my name is Abigail Yates, and I'm with the Vision of Kingdom Life Faith Center. You can count me in. That's it. Just simple. You just record yourself saying and get it off to us. You know what I mean? So thank you all so much. You don't have to be a member of our church to do that. You could be a member, a viewer, partner, or a friend, or a family member. You're just saying I'm connecting to the vision. That's it. We ain't asking you for no money out of it. Just a video. What you're doing is encouraging other people to be reconnected, recommitted, and to be refocused on the vision that God has given us. That's all it is. We're looking to, to bring people in and to change people's lives. That's why we launched the small groups. It's an evangelistic campaign to reach as many people as we can for the cause of Christ. That's the great commission, all right? That's the great commission. So listen, you gotta be a part of our podcast tonight. Uh, my wife and I are gonna be doing the podcast tonight, and we're really going to be talking about about family relationships, really about marriage relationships tonight. So listen, if you're married, you need to be on this podcast. If you're looking to get married, you need to be on this podcast. If you if you if you 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 engage to be married, you got to be on this podcast. It's going to help you. 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 I promise you, it is 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. It's gonna bless your life. All right. And uh, yeah. And tomorrow night's tomorrow night's Bible study is gonna be amazing and fantastic. Tomorrow's night Bible study is gonna be battling lustful desires. So you got to come on and be a part. Listen. If you're, if, you be, if you're battling lustful desires and you don't know how to overcome it and how to get through it, you got to be on. This one's going to change your life. I'm telling you, it's going to change your life. So please, please, please come on and be a part and let us bless your life. All right. All right. We got to go. But we'll see you guys again uh, tomorrow morning. I mean, tonight at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on the Kingdom Life Experience podcast. All right. Got to go. Love y'all. Be blessed in Jesus name.